For over 20 years, I've dedicated my life to bringing you the very best selling, marketing, and business building strategies to keep your business thriving. Get ready to experience the success you've been searching for. Welcome to the Tom Ferry Show. Hey everybody, welcome to the Tom Ferry Show, episode 45. Have you ever met a person, um, I call them energy sucking vampires. You know what I mean? Like they walk in the room and literally the living plants er, die in their presence because they bring such a negativity to the environment, to the culture, to the meeting, whatever it may be. And then you meet other people, probably like you, that when you walk in, they light up the room, it's like springtime, all the plants are growing and like you can hear birds chirping. It's just unbelievable the difference between that positive person and that negative person. And I guess my question for you today on the Tom Ferry Show is, do you know how to control it? Because I don't know about you, but listen, we're all human beings. We all have these experiences. I've been on airplanes that didn't go the direction I wanted to go or problems happened or a meeting went wrong or a deal fell apart. And it's pretty easy to get into our head and start beating ourselves up and saying all the wrong things and creating that downward spiral. Or, or am I the only person that's ever had a head that's a scary place to be? Well, if you're anything like me, I've been on this quest, this journey to condition myself, to align my behaviors, to make sure that when things don't go my way, and guess what, that happens, oh, quite often, that I don't let it derail me and I keep moving forward powerfully because I believe in life, one of the cardinal sins is to have something go wrong in your business and have all the people around you suffer because you're a negative SOB in the moment. Do you know what I'm talking about? And I don't mean to get so personal and real, but I know if something doesn't go well for me and I bring that drama, that damaged goods home, it affects my children, it affects my wife. Heck, my dogs don't wanna come near me. So I know you know what I'm talking about. Why is it that some people can have that experience just fall off them, if you will, and others carry it around with them, sometimes for days, weeks, sometimes for years? What if we knew how to solve it today? That's what the show is all about. Check it out. I remember being with one of my early great mentors, a guy named Brian Tracy, and I had saw Brian speak 1990-ish, I think it was, and Zig Ziglar, remember Zig Ziglar? Because you got to have goals for yourself. Y'all need a checkup from the neck up, right? If you're under age 30, Google Zig Ziglar. For the rest of us, you know what I'm talking about. Like legendary professional speaker, motivator, masterful. But he kept saying things like, you got to have a good attitude. And I remember thinking to myself, what is he talking about? Like, what is an attitude? And it wasn't until Brian Tracy, my, my early mentor, part of the reason I'm knock on wood, married to my lovely wife today because of a homework assignment from that guy. He said, Zig is telling you about your attitude and your attitude is simply how you view the world. So you have an attitude about watching the Tom Ferry show. You have an attitude about driving your car. You have an attitude about getting on an airplane. You know, the average human being on an airplane has four thoughts of death and dying per hour. Think about that. Their head is a scary place to be. Your attitude is simply how you view the world. Do you see the opportunity or do you see the pain and suffering, right? But what I wanted to know is how do you create that? How can I predict and control my attitude to produce maximum results and be the kind of man I wanted to be, whether it's with my wife and children or in business or in any other relationship? How do we control it? And it wasn't until I learned this, I had no control. Here's what Brian said. Your attitude is your self-talk, your focus, the questions you ask yourself, and your physiology, the way you move your body. Think about it like this. If I'm repeatedly saying, <coughs> I'm sick, oh, I don't feel well, my back hurts, this is going on, is my attitude, generally speaking, positive or negative in that moment? Now you might say, well, Tom, what if they just have a cold? Well, listen, they're talking themselves into it. Just like my son who, when he plays tennis, gets up and says, I now command my conscious and unconscious mind to give you the ability to serve aces, be quick to the ball, close out the match, and win starting right now, baby, yes. He's doing the same thing that that person who says, I think I'm getting a cold. It's the same thing. It's their self-talk. One is building up their esteem while the other is actually hurting you. That was fascinating for me. But then Brian also said, it's your focus. And what he means is it's the question you think about all the time, or it's the questions that you're asking. Do you know someone that always does this? Why do these things keep happening to me? 
Do you know someone like that? Someone that um, I, I saw a friend recently. <laughs> this person um, goes through relationships quickly and rapidly, and they always seem to date the same exact person over and over again. Do you know somebody like that? And, and I'm his pal, so I'm like, hey, buddy, look in the mirror. You're the common denominator. But see, he keeps asking him this question, like, why do I keep running into the same wrong girls? I'm like, dude, it's you. If you ask yourself a bad question, why does this keep happening to me? How come no one ever lists their home with me? Why can't I get a commission that is worthwhile? Versus a question like, who do I need to be to impact customers in a way that causes them to, to want to pay me more? What kind of marketing message could I deliver that would cause customers to say, all that for only 7%? See, if you ask yourself a better question, you get a better quality answer and therefore a better result. And all this, impacts your attitude. The last one is physiology. I remember meeting Deepak Chopra many years ago. I had him speak to a little private mastermind group, about 60 people, fascinating individual and, and you know, unbelievable to watch his career over the last couple decades. But I remember him talking about the body-mind connection and he would say, if you move your body in a powerful way, it impacts your psychology instantaneously. So right now, outside of maybe someone that's watching this on a subway or laying in bed at night watching the Tom Ferry Show, if you were to just to do this, just do this with me. Just raise your arms up like this. Come on. Don't, oh, my team's doing it inside the office. That's awesome. Sarah can't, she's holding the microphone. One hand, that's good. If you do this with a big smile on your face, now do this, look straight up in the sky and get depressed. Go ahead, come on, get depressed. Big smile on your face, depressed. You can't do it, why? Because the way you're moving your body is more like Superwoman or Superman. It's powerful. And yet, just for fun today, Watch and observe how people walk around, their pace, where their shoulders are, what their facial expressions look like, how they're breathing. What you're gonna discover is, there's a whole bunch of people that kind of walk around <laughs> and then they wonder why no one ever lists with them and they wonder why they never have any prospects and everything about their self-talk, their focus and their physiology impacts their attitude, which is simply how you view the world, positive or negative. Very positive, sale in the background, love that. The next one is action. So watch this. I was blown away the day that I learned that these three things control the one thing that everyone tells me I've gotta be positive. And all my attitude does is determine the action that I take. It, that's all it does. It, it kind of overlays, if you will, my, my point of reference from making that phone call or knocking on that door or asking for the appointment, right? So if all these things are working, my attitude is, yeah, baby, and my action, dun dun dun, dun it's gonna be pretty extraordinary, and all I'm gonna do then is produce a result. So consider the following, you ready? When I produce that result, what happens is I increase self-talk, focus, and physiology based upon whatever the result was. So what's the game? What's the formula? What can you do with this information? Now I know some of you are watching and you're like, Coach Tom, I am one of the most positive people on the planet. And I would say to you, how do we reinforce it? And if you're watching this and you know that you're like me or like so many people that walk this, this planet that realized that by the time you were from zero to 18, you were told, no, don't stop, don't even try, you can't, you're gonna fail 180,000 times on average. If you read the wonderful old book, What to Say When You Talk to Yourself by Shad Helmstetter, he said that we have 40,000 to 60,000 thoughts a day. 40,000 to 60,000 thoughts a day, and unfortunately, most of them are the same thoughts repeated over and over and over. And what if some of those thoughts are tearing you apart, are building not the blocks and foundation of success, but instead the walls so you can protect yourself, never take any action, and never, ever take any risk. It all comes down to this, my friends. If you're, if you're knowing you're a little bit off track, then let's work on it. If you're really rocking, let's intensify it. Here's the list, you ready? Four actions I want you to take. Number one, fill your cup. So it's funny, when I married my lovely wife now of 22 years, boom, boom, October 30th, love it, married her twice. I remember the first morning we woke up together in the same bed and I jumped out of bed and it was 4.45 in the morning and I raced down the hall and I got on the phone and I called my affirmation partner and I started doing my affirmations with Ty and we're having fun and I'm yelling and I'm, ah, I'm alive, excited, full of energy. And I came back in the room and she looked at me like this are you gonna do that every day? And I said, yes, I'm gonna do it every day. You wanna know why? 
Because 22 years ago, I was not the Tom Ferry you're watching right now. 22 years ago, I was half the age. I was half the man. I was working towards becoming the person I am today. I put in the work over and over. I filled the cup. I listened to audio programs. I read books. I still, to this day, do my affirmations, read, watch videos. I'm studying because what I know is if I keep pouring in all that positive stuff, then guess what comes out? Um, Wayne Dyer. I feel like this is like the name dropping video of all the people I've been so blessed to meet in my life. Um, I remember being with Wayne, same mastermind group, and Wayne says, um, this is what people don't understand. When you squeeze an orange, you don't get apple juice. And I remember going, what? And then he said it like this, Tom, when you squeeze, and we all get squeezed in life, what comes out? What comes out is what you repeatedly put in. So if I'm repeatedly putting in doubt, lack, limitation, fear, death, dying, destruction, the whole world's falling apart. When you get squeezed, what comes out? Blah! But if I'm repeatedly putting in, I can do it. I'm the best. I'm learning from the best. I'm studying my craft. I'm mastering my skills. I'm a master of my time. If I'm continually putting in all that right stuff, when something squeezes me, what comes out is good. Does that make sense? Now I know there's got to be someone watch this going, whoa, fairy, it's official. This is hokey. Hmm. Is it? Is it hokey to be on track, to take control? I think it's kind of hokey to be in a coma and be a victim. And I see a whole lot of that around the world. How about you? I want to raise my kids to have high, healthy, big self-esteem and an unbelievable work ethic and a heart of gold and a desire to serve and help others. And you know what? If they get this right, anything is possible. You know it and I know it. So fill your cup every day. Read audio programs, Tom Ferry Show, the whole nine yards. Number two, have a mantra like I did with my son, Stephen. Can we link up Stephen's mantra? Can we do that? I'm sure somehow to the Tom Ferry Show, maybe on Facebook, right? And this is a, this is a, at the time, 13 year old, a 14 year old getting up on stage in front of 5,000, 4,000 people at the summit and doing this live because he's done it so many times. And guess what? When he's down in a match, that's when he does it even more, but he does it before he goes into the match to make sure that his mindset is right and he's focused on his mission, and that's the game for you and I. Number three, you got to stand like you mean it. Shoulders back, smile and face. I always tell people, imagine a Superman or a Superwoman cape on your back. How would you walk around if like a kid, remember being a kid and running around with like the towel, right? Do you ever do that, Sarah? Like I did that all the time, so, you know, dun, 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 right? There's something powerful about that. Now, if you saw the, saw the movie The Incredibles, you would know, no cape. But the point is this, people read your physiology. You walk into a room, you know the difference. You see someone, you go, wow, look at that guy. He's got tremendous confidence. Look at that gal. She's really got it going on. Very powerful, right? Or just, or just, just great self-esteem, great self-image. You can just read it on people. And you can also read the opposite. So every day, we got to stand like we mean it. And the last one is, this is the big one, every day, and I know I'm covering it up. Every day, every day, every day. Release, gratitude, and declare. What do I need to let go of? What's bothering me? What's that, what's that annoying self-talk that's going inside my head? There's something powerful to say, okay, I just acknowledge that I keep thinking the same negative thought over again. I'm, I'm letting that go. I'm going to release it. You can write it down on a piece of paper. You can rip it up, throw it in the trash, do something ceremonious. But the, the big thing is just to acknowledge I've got this thought going through my head. And if I let it continue to fester in my mind, it's going to impact my attitude. It's going to impact my action. It's going to impact my results. And that spiral is now going the wrong direction. So every day, what do I need to let go of? What do I need to like say I'm sorry for, or just accept that that person did what they did, and they're doing the best they can with what they got. And I am a human being who can make my own choice on how I want to react to that situation. I don't need to have it control me. I know what I'm doing here. I make that choice, very powerful. The second thing is to get grateful, right? What are you grateful for? Think about it. If you just stopped right now and just wrote down, what are five things I'm grateful for? Are you grateful for your health? Are you grateful for your family? Are you grateful for the way you think? Are you grateful for the opportunities in front of you? Even if you're down here, are you grateful for that there's room to go up there? The bottom line is when you, when you think about what you're grateful for, it alters your physiology. It changes your state, makes your attitude better, puts you in the right action. And then the last thing is every day to declare to get certain about what it is you want and write down your top three goals, your top five goals, and write it in the form of like an affirmation as if it's already been achieved. Now I know as you're watching this, 
I covered a lot of ground on this. I, you know, I was kind of, a, it's like the name dropping show. That's what this should be called. And I take that, listen, I'm so grateful that I've been you know, just blessed to be exposed to all these extraordinary men and women. So I, you know, I, I, you know, I learned from them. They're my mentors, they're my heroes, right? So I know this, we're in sales. And our income's in direct proportion, or you know, yeah, it's a direct correlation, if you will, to the impact we can have on others. If all of this is working, the impact you can have is massive. But if all of this is negative, it's you. And that's where your income's gonna go, negative. Make sense? Thanks so much for watching. Take a lot of action. Give me some comments and feedback. You know I love it. Remember your strategy matters, and now more than ever, your attitude rules. Thanks for watching. If you love what you're seeing here, then click the button below to join our online community absolutely free. Thanks so much. <laughs>